What's up buds, it's Z here again to show you my Organibus Grow. In this episode it's going to be another full seed to harvest showing a bunch of new strains that I just dropped. And I mean, I didn't drop them, They're, I just grew them though and they were amazing. I got all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm also going to be showing you a bunch of my tips and tricks from full seed to harvest all the way from start to finish. So stay tuned for that and make sure you st you don't miss anything because a lot of crazy gas is about to come your way so light up roll one up with me and stay tuned and stick it out now just to be clear guys i only give this out for informational purposes i do not condone growing anything prior to looking into your own municipality's laws on cultivation nothing you see here is for sale and it's fully legal to grow in my state now let's get into it now I got some crazy crosses. I got the Genetic Designer 7D. This is Cherry Pie Kush times East Coast Sour Diesel times East Coast Sour Diesel and Grateful Breath. This is some crazy gas, some old school heirloom genetics. We also got the Grape Stomper OGBX from Sunken Treasure Seeds, which actually has some of the Gage Green Group genetics, which is Grape Stomper OG. And that's crossed with the Max Stomper and then crossed back into the... um into itself so yeah you got some crazy gas going on there i might have said that a little confusingly but yeah it's max stomper crossed back into grape stomper so it's gas and then you also got the 7d like i said that you already know that's the gas then of course i'm also hunting through this cake crasher from sea junkie now this is something i've been waiting to hunt through because i've been looking for the epitome of an ice cream cake strain is what i was looking for Sorry, I just took a hit, so I'm a little out of breath. Ooh. But anyway, I am also going to be taking some clones of all of my favorites from last cycle. So that's, of course, the Franco, the Mac Kush. We got uh, the gr new... Um, while you're taking clones, a good way to do it is to just cut below the node. And of course, I have a better video of this elsewhere. But for now, you can just follow along here. And uh, anyway, you cut below that node and you're gonna apply some kind of hormone if you got it if you use any i like to use a natural one i'll either use aloe or honey or as well that could work just fine as a rooting hormone it's not really a hormone but it actually will uh, prevent any disease from forming and it'll help the plant uh, form its roots faster by uh, preventing any of that bad stuff another thing i like to point out here is while I'm selecting my plants, I like to do them really early on. I have to be super picky because I'm in a tight spot, guys. So in order to pick out some winners, I got to pick them out in veg. So some breeders and some people would say against this, but on a lot of actually more experienced breeders that I've seen talk and uh, learn from and I look up to, actually talk about how important just a stem rub is so i won't even look at the other characteristics of the plant until i know that it's going to be stanky danky because i want that plant to be like like wow in the taste bud wow flippers and all wow 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 this is a nice boat wow i sort of got screwed on the old bedroom selection every room's like four times as big as mine and if it doesn't have any of that, then I'm not even going to look for the other boxes. So first it's got to be smelly, and then I'm looking for those other boxes to get checked. So within the smelliest cultivars are then going to be my selections of um, which ones I'm going to keep. So usually the smelliest ends up being the, the dankest and the grow and like the best grower. So just so happens to be that way um i will also notice that sometimes the most vigorous plants are actually males early on so sometimes what you thought was a great selection ends up being a male and unless you're trying to breed that might not be what you want but when i find something like that i'm like Whew, that's gonna be what i breed with so i'll make room for it and i'm gonna make that sacrifice for you guys and make some seeds just so that you guys can uh, not have to have seeds in your garden when i make the feminized versions of course i'm also going to be making regular seeds for those who like that because i think that regular seeds are magical and just as awesome as feminized seeds can be regular seeds give you um, a lot of genetic diversity so i'm going to be creating both different kinds because they both have their great attributes 
and as you can see I'm also removing those lower nodes as I let that plant grow I'll be making a um, full um, I'm actually doing a time lapse right now that's going to show this training technique more in depth but I have this in a lot of my growing videos I'm going to remove those lower nodes but I'm going to leave those big fan leaves because those are my solar panels those are going to keep collecting light while I divert energy to just the branches I want to keep meanwhile this is me making my uh, new water reservoir that I got just for my blue mats. Now, with organics, it's hard to have an uh, automatic watering system, but when you're starting to level up and get into a bigger scale, and I'm going to be having a grow at my buddy's house at the same time as mine, so I wanted to free up some time and give myself the ability to not worry about my grow as much and just be able to check in every day but not have to necessarily go in and water the plants every single day so this is going to free me up with a lot of time where i can just kind of prune and check in the plants and you know make sure that my uh environment's dialed in whereas before i was spending more time uh, mixing nutrients and all that stuff when i was growing synthetically so it's come a long way i like hand watering and i love it but um, and I'm going to be doing that at my buddy's house still, but um, you just got to free up some time. And the only way to do that with organic is these uh, blue mat carrots. So I set up my, uh, um, what did I do? What did I do? I set it up so it, it don't spew. This is Man Morgana's Pine Reconfiguration Program. We recommend to close your eyes to make a complete run of the program. Remember... I have a constantly fed water reservoir with a float valve installed, but I like to have a backup plan, so I also made a piece of a hose used for my dehumidifier and an old drip tray. And the hose is rigged to go right out the window next to the AC. I don't show that. But anyway, I'm just showing you how the float functions inside of the, um, the water reservoir. Basically, as soon as it gets too full, it's going to shut off the water from being allowed in, just like a toilet would. And um, I thought that that was pretty satisfactory, but even though I haven't had a spill, I wanted to make sure that even if it did ever overflow, that I had a backup plan. So I installed this extra tray uh, you don't see here. Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! SpongeBob, careful! Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! I have this awesome air. Um, purifier that my friend gave me so i would suggest getting something like this you don't necessarily have to get one this expensive this is called the molecule air filter it's one of their older models but the new one is very expensive this was expensive when it was bought and it's still expensive for the filters but you only have to change them every six months um and the thing is this thing is cleaning uh mold it's killing all these different uh pathogens and pollen that could be falling into my uh tent so it's definitely really worth the uh investment you could get one that's just a hepa filter this is also a hepa filter as well as all those things that i mentioned but it's using a um i think it's using uv light and it's like a um, ionic um, I, I don't know you gotta have to look into it so it's really it, it's a little more advanced than your typical air filter but it's not necessary for your typical grow I'm just using it because I had access to it so now that I have my grow room in check I got my uh, water drip line going all the way along my closet like you just saw and then it's going along my pots and of course in my video where i install my blue mats i go way more in depth than this but stay with me for now guys you can go watch that video later but anyway the blue mats are basically wrapping around the pots i don't have the drippers installed yet because these are just my 15 gallon no-till pots and first I wanted to test out my shelf to make sure it's going to hold the 120 pounds of water. I'm about 150 to 160 pounds on a wet day. Showed that this could work. Time to bring these bad Larrys in here. That's the plan. That's the blue mat system. You can see that coming through here to the middle might be able to see it a little better on the 11 pot basically plan. 12 pots is the legal limit here in mass so that's what i uh, stick to in my flowering room 
So my 15 gallon flowering pots are actually a few years old at this point and I'm going to do my best to not disturb them when I uh, transplant them. I have a video on this that's more in depth. I'm probably going to say that a lot but I truly do have a video about pretty much every step of this process but I just wanted to knit it all together to give you guys a comprehensive uh, full round, well rounded uh, aspect. But Basically, I drop some Costa Maine in the bottom of these pots and then I carefully cut the bottoms open and I place my no-till soil into them without uh, disturbing the puck of soil. I then carefully surrounded them with more uh, of the Costa Maine soil. Now I'm going to top dress them with my, of course, my regenerative compost, which I made a way more in-depth video just recently on how to make this yourself. You can make your own, own compost at home which has just got everything that you need and it's going to save you a lot of money in the long run when you start making your own compost because you're not going to have to buy a lot of those ingredients that I used to have to pay for and I still buy and still pay for some awesome ingredients because it's going to elevate my grow but the truth is you could actually get away with a lot of things that are just inside of this I even got a natural rove beetle introduced right into my uh, compost pile just because I had a fungus net issue. So things will balance themselves out if you just let nature do its thing. Don't fight nature. If you see bugs like that, then don't freak out. Look it up. You know, at first I had the fungus gnats and I was pretty upset, but I just kind of kept feeding the compost and I was just ignoring it because I knew that eventually when I got them in my pots, they would check themselves out. But then rove beetles naturally found it. So I was amazed at that. So here's my uh, no-till compost um, top dressing recipe. As you can see, a lot of those recipes um, has been... I mean, a lot of the ingredients have actually been dropped out because I was able to get rid of them now that I've added my own compost. We'll start with the back one. So go to the kitchen. And that's what this is all about. This page is all about making do with what you got. And as you can see, these roots are just already decayed, but I'm just digging out a little bit more just so that I can uh, see that's all just rotted. So what happens is as the roots are alive, they give off certain acids. And um, since they have a symbiotic relationship with other microbes and fungi, they don't get decayed by the microbes. But once they die, they stop giving off any acid that wards those off and the relationship with the fungi dies. And then they end up getting eaten by the fungi and nothing's left but just a little bit of root The ball. saprophytic fungi attacks them and actually starts eating them back into the soil. And then they become nutrients in for the new plants that you're going to grow. Shirt, so it's all just a regenerative process. And I talk about it a lot in all my videos, but it all starts from the beginning. So here I am just uh, going through and picking out what I'm going to transplant into my bigger pots. Smoke a pound. If you smoke an eighth a day, that means you need at least a pound every four months. Hell yeah. So if you could harvest a pound every four months, then you wouldn't have to buy weed. And if you bought an eighth a day, you're looking at you know 30 to 40 bucks at a dispensary maybe even 50 if you're spoiling yourself Spoiling. <laughs> and if you're going to the street it's going to be 20 bucks a day so what's that 20 let's say even on the low end you're looking at 20 or 30 bucks a day I can see it all around. and you pay that that's going to be so at least um, a thousand bucks a month my soil is actually moving around too 900 much freaking me out that's about 900 bucks a month bro so do you want to spend that or smoke that or do that yourself so yeah i prefer to grow my own kush because it's definitely more cost effective in the long run and yeah you might not need as much kush as me but i smoke a lot and i share it with my friends so that's why i grow so much one amazing thing about um the one amazing thing about these pots is, of course, it's a slight till situation because I am removing a one gallon uh, center about it in order to um, put in my uh, one gallon pots. So when I remove that, 
The best thing about this is instead of adding mycorrhizae with every time I transplant, if I keep my uh, cover crop alive, then it's going to actually just transfer right from the cover crop right to my plant's roots. And so that's going to be something that's always alive in the soil. Mycorrhizae actually only really thrives on a living plant's roots. So the best way to keep it alive is with a cover crop. So that's another reason why it's important to keep a cover crop alive within, uh, uh, in between cycles. And that's going to also help fix nitrogen from the air and turn the nitrogen into a usable form for the plant. So everything that I do in this system is just to try to make it basically work for itself. Um, <laughs> It's all just getting better with every cycle, and that's why it's just so important to just work with nature and improve it. You know, there's so many different things you can do. Um, again, I might have already told you about this, but I did try to make my first crosses with that pollen, um, and it actually failed in storage. So the only crosses that I did get were the ones that I made before I stored the pollen, which was when I crossed the Hella Jelly and the um, Franco's Lemon Cheese clones that I had at my buddy's house with the Max Stomper Kosher Kush pollen. Um, but other than that, I didn't get any more seeds, so it's going to be a very limited testing, and I'm super thrilled to have some people test them for me. I'm also going to do a 40 seed hunt of the Lime Jelly and a 40 seed hunt of the Elote to see what I can find and also... Um, if I do have any seeds left over, I will do a small release of that. But for the most part, I'm going to be focused on the new crosses that I'm making. I'm actually trading some of these amazing uh, cl uh, clones that I found in this grow, which is like this uh, grape stomper. This one was just so grapey. It was like a baby diarrhea with sour grapes. Man, it was so stinky and so awesome. So I found someone that was willing to uh, trade my cuts because they thought they were so awesome and fire. So they're going to trade me for some of um, some breeder cut clones that they've actually purchased from a reputable, um, reputable source called Boston Clones. So they're very uh, legit, and if you want to get some uh, some legit clones from them, they're expensive. But you can get anything from just a typical clone up to a breeder's cut clone for up to a thousand bucks. And so I'm going to meet my friend here, who is going to give me Runts, Cap Junkie, Gary Payton, Strawberry Fritter, and Oreos. Oreos was actually from a different uh, source, but they're also reputable and it's supposedly all breeder cuts so i'm gonna verify that with him through his text with um with boston clones and i'm gonna be trading some of my um, amazing cuts from this cycle like my vanilla bourbon cut of that cake crasher that just smells like straight gas and straight vanillas so i'm super stoked to be able to um do some kind of trading with this and to be able to make these selections, as you can see, this cake crasher is just fire. Um, I had several other cake crashers that I was poking through, but this one is the best one. So the other one is just going to go to make hash. And same with the other 7D Fino. It was pretty good, but it was more on maybe on the... Um, it actually might have been on the Grateful Breath side, which did give it some good taste, but it didn't quite have as dank of a smell. Uh, even though it did have a good stem rub earlier on, it didn't transfer as crazy as this one, and it wasn't covered in trichomes like this one. And this had that sour diesel, uh, like, foxy mama growth, but it also had the density of the cherry pie kush. As you can see, this was my old compost bin. So I, of course, upgraded to the Baron's compost bin, which is all uh, galvanized steel, and it's made to last, so... Um, I would highly recommend it. I talk about it in one of my other videos. I also got reached out to by a, vid, uh, a person to um, try to promote this product that's an atomizing mister. But I decided not to go with them because I found the same product on AliExpress for $16. And actually the exact same model that they were trying to sell me for um, $120 was $60 on AliExpress. So you could have got that model as well. I have the link to that in my uh, uh, in the description. But 
I'm not gonna recommend anything that I wouldn't use and I'm not gonna necessarily throw them under the bus but I think you know who I'm talking about and uh, the thing is all the, a lot of products that you see are from AliExpress and they're from China no hate to the company but I just didn't see the value in it I actually prefer prefer a spray bottle even after using this product it's it it worked pretty good but sometimes like after a transplant i need more water uh to wet the plant down and try to get all that soil off of it and clean it off so i like to use a heavier duty uh spray bottle for that process so there's certain times where this really wouldn't be that effective like that case but there's other times when this would work great like applying some kind of insecticide or some kind of cleaner and something that you don't necessarily need to soak the plant with but either way the grape stomper made this just amazing and just wow 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 for a long time it's become a favorite with everyone that i've talked to i also did a lot of polls on some of my posts the cake crasher the franco's lemon cheese the grape and the mac uh, stomper and kosher kush were actually some of the leaders so those are all gonna come out very amazing and I'm super, super stoked to see how those come out. So what we see later on is going to be some crazy things coming from those crosses. And as you can see here, me and my buddy Johnny Mac are just going to be tearing down these plants and taking what we can from the uh, grape stomp was the first one to take down. It was an amazing harvest. I couldn't have been more happy. I mean, I've seen people get more, but I got a nice hefty eight ounces off of this one plant, and I am just so happy with the quality of the buds. So I couldn't really ask for a better harvest. Yes, some people do better with synthetics, but I don't know if they get the same quality and the same terps that this has. I wish I could give you a smellometer, but I don't quite have one of those invented yet. Ideally, I will just maintain the environment I mentioned before, 60 degrees and 60%, but it will always be more so, like a window of 58 and 63 degrees and 58 to 63 degrees humidity. The close-ups of the buds show that the trichomes on the other cultivars are still developing and they'll need more time. However, they're still fun to look at. What up guys, we're on week nine and we are here to show you my Organibus Grow. This is the 5x9 tent. I harvested one plant already. One plant was ready to come down. Actually, two plants. Super stoked with how big the grape stomper came out. I mean, all the branches were like this. I got about 30 tops like this. 20 to 30 tops. And um, this is a really good one. And it's the one that I seeded. So, <laughs> all those ironically lime covered nugs with hints of purple covered capitate trichomes. My favorite of the cake crasher by Sea Junkie just overtook the other ones in size, smells, vigor, and seemingly potency as well. Its once green leaf slowly developed into dark, almost black leaf into flower. That equally dark buds rose out of absolutely drenched in glittery trichomes. It smells very creamy and hashy, almost a blue hue to the nugs and trichomes. They could be the dentist nugs I've ever grown on a plant. And all the checks that I look for are hit, it, since it even spread out into what looks like to be a pretty decent yield for one plant. And the 7D also basically look like golf balls. I even made this meme basically to show off how the structure of this is. And this one isn't even full of seeds. They just really have that much bulbous structure to them. Some of the different nugs, nugs almost look like cherry pie, but most of them all showed this sour diesel structure, but they had the density of the cherry pie kush. And you can see they really got plumped up because of the um, CPK. It's definitely smells like something out of my past, you know? It reminds you of that old skunk that you used to hide from your parents and uh, I have a few winners in the tent here, between the Mac Kush, Grape Stomper OGBX, Cake Crasher, 7D, Franco's Lemon Cheese, and the Chem Deer. 
After two to three weeks, I'll expect the flavors to match the smells. And if this is so, then it's going to be one of my all-time favorites for sure. But then again, I love all types of weed, so I really don't have one true favorite. This isn't a normal purple smell, def a lot more fruity and sour funky than most purple cultivars. Now I have a better idea of why Grape Stomper is one of Gage Green Group's most famous strains. I recently made my e first ever crosses with the Max Stomper times Kosher Kush male that I selected for being very similar to the female. They both had very limey smells and they had an easy to train structure. I then crossed that with a few of my favorite clones so far, the Frankel's Lemon Cheese and the Hella Jelly from last run. I tried to cross it with some of my other plants later, but after I had stored it, I think the pollen may have gotten slightly wet before I was able to store it properly, and just because of the humidity in the air, or maybe it was either prior to storage or from opening it before letting it defrost, but either way, it didn't live. And just I just have to move on and keep learning, but now these first crosses may never get released to the public for sale, as the supply is very limited, under 200 seeds of each one. Plus, they need to be tested first, so most likely, only once I make crosses out of the seeds I hunt from and make sure that these are stable, then they'll actually be released. Only a select few growers will be chosen to test these seeds, along with my Patreon supporters to see if the cross is as stable as the parents. Check the link in the description to, to subscribe to the email list for lightseekerseeds.com so you don't miss out when range. the site drops. And you want to hold that as long as possible. Many people have said it. It's basically gonna be a window between 65 and 58% humidity, and you know, 64 and 58%, um, I mean 58 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's the goal. With the winter here in New England, it helps a lot. I use a window fan to keep things cool, and uh, that gets everything nice and cooled down in here. And so th these things have been hanging for two weeks now. We already got some in jars. We got some that were ready to trim today and some that will be ready very soon. So I'm gonna show you what I look for and how you know when the plant's ready. Some of these have been hanging for two weeks now. So this plant is ready. And the reason I can tell is just look how dank it is. No, I'm just kidding. That's not how you know. Anyway, when you're, when you're looking for a bud, the way you know for sure is you get that snap, you see if it snaps off at the main stem at, um, on one of the smaller buds. So let's take this 7D for example. Perfect we'll take snap. this smaller bud here and see if it snaps off. But not really. Which it did wasn't a clean break. So that one could go another day. But another way that you test it is give it a little smush test. I call this test. the pinch test. And yeah, it's gonna hurt my heart to do this, but we're just gonna give it a small little squish. And see how it bounced right back to its original shape when I did that? So look so at these Dr. You know Seuss looking nugs, guys. I think this was straight something trimmed. out of Whoville. I think maybe the Grinch himself might have grown this kush. If I wasn't doing it myself, I might have been mistaken for the Grinch. But I'm not an angry soul, and I think my heart's getting bigger with every grow. So I'm hoping that I can produce some amazing magic, and don't leave, don't let me leave you hanging. I'm going to be making some crazy crosses with the Franco's Lemon Cheese that everyone is wanting. And I'm going to cross that with all of my favorites from this grow, as well as all my favorite selections that I'm also about to be growing because I got Heartbreaker on the way. This Kate Crasher is gonna be gas. I have a crazy Heartbreaker male that I'm also gonna be making regular seeds with. So I think it's like Hawaiian punch smelling. And w between that and then the Franco's Lemon Cheese feminized seeds, I'm gonna have a lot of gear to be working through for the next year or two. And it's gonna take me some time. So every single time that I grow, I'll probably hunt through like three or four of them. This is the Franco's Lemon Cheese here. And as you can see, it's not quite as pretty as some of the others, but it's got that awesome green and it's got some good crystals. But the truth is it's about that stank and the effects that it gives. It's got the craziest awesome cheese flavor. It has the lemon, like lemonade taste, not like lemon pledge. It's like someone just made a glass of lemonade and you took a sip of that 
that and then you ate a piece of cheese off a cheese plate that is what this literally tastes like because you get the lemon on the first inhale and then you get the cheese on the exhale that sticks to your mouth literally like a piece of cheese it really is a lemon cheese and i am ecstatic about the high that it gives you it can make you get work done it has you getting tasks done that you didn't comp uh, didn't even think that you could complete you got chores that you were starting last week and now you finally smoked it and you're doing stuff that you're gonna do a week from now so that's how awesome it is um i also was pumped about this moby phylaxis it didn't get as big as i was hoping obviously but it did do its thing and then we got the cake crasher i mean the uh chem cookies um this is actually gonna be the last time i grow it a lot of people like it and they want to see more of it but um i actually wasn't thrilled with this phenotype and the other phenotype that was a little bit danker I actually ended up having some hermy traits so no fault to the breeder i've heard cookies the gsc form cut having hermy traits so i think that that's just an issue with that strain so anyway here's some dry trimming chips all right now i'm going to give you guys some dry trimming tips i prefer a dry trim because i think it uh, preserves the terpenes better by giving it a slower dry and by leaving those fan leaves and all those sugar leaves on while it uh, slowly dries out, it just enables everything to decompose properly and uh, prevents it from drying out too quickly. Low, so what I do first is I remove all those bigger drop fan leaves low, and then um, I drop down the big nugs onto my tray. I don't like to overpack the tray. I think it's good to just focus on a couple branches at a time because if you try to do too many then you're gonna try to like lose focus and maybe go too fast and you know not really get the quality that you want so just start with a comfortable amount that you're that um you know isn't too overwhelming so that you don't get um you know too antsy and, and rush through it put on a good movie and just start trimming um, I like to carefully start to peel back some of those leaves that are dried up and covering up the buds. You can kind of use the bottom part of the scissors to separate it from the bud before you actually snip it as you can see I'm doing here. And it's really just up to your preference. Um, you can leave some leaves on until you go to smoke to protect the buds a little bit more or you can give it a really clean trim like you would um, see at like a nice dispensary and this is actually going to be better than some dispensaries that use like a tumble roller because they're actually cutting off a lot of the outside of the bud I'm only going to trim Look like the that. outside of the sugar leaves That's too that like you can leave some of those sugar leaves they're covered in trichomes but I'm also not afraid to lose some material because the rest that I trim is all going to go to hash and I like to make bubble hash with all my trim. What do you guys do with your trim? This anyway, then once I'm done trimming off the branches, I then cut the bigger nugs into a cup and then I uh, get them ready to weigh them out. That's and, called uh, bucking. Yeah, so I just kind of separate it from the branch, just as you see here. You can kind of see each nug is kind of kind of made its own uh, way. And then the top bud, um, or like the very top of the cola, I just separate as its own bud. And depending how spaced out it is, maybe I'll leave one of the lower buds on there to make the cola a little longer. And then I just take the difference, so I got 100 grams there with the cup. Um, after I filled up the jar, I think I uh, the cup is about 67 grams, so I had about 33 grams or so. That was the max stomper. I think I got like 5 ounces off of that. But the thing is, guys, I got about three pounds in total. And, and in including everything, you, you don't want to rush it, guys. Don't screw Five yourself. Don't go ahead and rush yourself because you're just going to you're just gonna really um, upset yourself if you go and... You don't want to let all that hard work go to waste, guys, because you basically spent months trying to uh, get that bud to the perfection and... If you just rush it now, it's just going to be a waste. And that's another reason why I like to grow organically because we are synergistic beings. The materials that we interact with will influence not only our physical health, but our state of mind as well. Many things are harmful and poisonous, and some have developed over centuries to work with our bodies and energies, such as cannabis, for instance. 
as many of you know, while other substances simply influence the same dopamine or serotonin receptors in our bodies that cause dependency and addiction, cannabis actually plays on something unique that we have built into our bodies called the endocannabinoid system. You can research more about it, but it's almost as if we were meant to find this plant. And while any amount of THC will actually get you high, some of the effects um, that most people uh, experience from properly preserving the cannabinoids, flavonoids, terpenes, volatile sulfur compounds, and the other molecules present in cannabis leads to a more medicinal entourage effect. And the range of flavors most don't often get to experience from smoking that true organic gas. I'm always learning more, but I always just want to share everything I've learned from others and experienced so far so that you guys can follow along on my YouTube and do it yourself. I just made a video on drying and curing, so you don't want to skip over that because that goes way more in depth than all of it, but you don't want to lose all those volatile compounds that are very easily evaporated. And it's one thing that you want to make sure you do is don't let your room get above 70 degrees when you're curing. So here I am just doing a quick smoke test on some of these. So I'll let me talk for a little bit. Let myself talk. <laughs> but the cake crasher, as you can see, is just a delicate treat. It's just pungent. It smells like a vanilla bourbon and it makes you sweat when you smoke it. It really is like taking a shot of some gas. Um, it's strong. It's super strong. And I've never had a cake strain that has the gas to it. So it was very unique and it, it just gives me that sting, man. Wow. <coughs> that was like <coughs> sweet. Man, I'll take one more, right? Like a what can one more skunk's do? butthole. <coughs> It's like straight hash, dude. That was like smoking hash. Wow. That one might be <coughs> the most one of the most potent. Super sweaty, one. guys. This one really Let's makes you sweat. It it's definitely a nightcap. It's strong enough that you don't need to. Holy crap. That's a one-hit wonder. <clears throat> It. Wow, it's got me sweating. That's potent. I'm like dripping sweat. I think I just left my body. <coughs> They're gonna be like, whoops. <laughs> That's strong. So after all that hard work growing, drying, and trimming your buds, don't let it go to waste and rush your cure. Man, it's definitely going to bring out way more flavor if you wait that full time. And ideally, you know, if you got your room dialed in good enough when you're drying, it's kind of going to act like a jar and you can almost hang them up long enough indefinitely in that room if you have everything perfect. But ideally you're gonna want to take it down as soon as you get them to the perfect spot which if you keep them in this certain uh, conditions then you're gonna get there and then once you get them in the jar you're gonna burp them two to three times a day for the first three days and then after that you're gonna burp them probably like once a day for the rest of the week and then by the end of that week though they should be at a stable point or I use these humidity sensors where I can uh, I just burp them if they get above uh, 55 to 60 percent and then I just know that that's when I should give them a little burp and once they're stable then you should just leave them closed for like two to three weeks dude and you're gonna get the stankiest best buds ever so yeah that's the way I do it um, what do you guys do if you guys so there's many different ways to get the same results uh, I've heard some people using um, totes uh, some people will use those big vaults some people will use um big turkey bags but i don't want my buds to touch a bag ever but that's just me so 
you know, you can do it however you want. And uh, I like to let them cure in the glass jar. I basically hang them in a perfect environment until they're perfectly dialed up. Like you can see from my uh, curing video, I obviously told you some tips earlier. But my curing video is going to go way more in depth than that. So which bud would you think would be your, f your favorite out of this? I went, I went from Chem Cookies to 7D to Mac Kush to Grape Stomper to the Grape Stomper uh, Grapey Fino. Then I went to the se uh, Franco's Lemon Cheese. And then last but not least, the Cake Crasher. The Cake Crasher was just amazing. I, I, I just can't say enough about it. As well as the Grape Stomper. It just is amazing. Literally tastes like grapes. Was some of the tastiest flavors that I've ever gotten off of a strain. Um, in, in retrospect, the 7D is a lot better than I kind of gave it credit to. I kind of was looking for more of a sour, so at first I was like, oh, I don't know. But dude, it was amazing. And man, it got that crazy 7, uh, sour diesel structure. But then it has the cherry pie, like, out exhale on the flavor. So... That's what kind of threw me off is it didn't quite taste like it smelled. But then once I realized that it was the cherry pie that I was tasting, whoa, then I was really blown away. And then the cake crasher is just, it grew like crystals. And then you got the Mac Kush times Kosher Kush, Mac Stomper times Kosher Kush, which grew tremendously well. It had a great structure, very dense buds. And I'm super stoked to see what kind of crosses that produces with the uh, Hella Jelly as well as with the Franco's Lemon Cheese. So we got the Elote and the Lime Jelly. Um, oh, here I am talking about the... Uh By week 10, the plants are packing on some weight and the trichomes look like I've honestly never seen before. The Max Stomper and Kosher Kush smells like straight up limes and it has the classic cushy structure with dense, ironically lime covered nugs with hints of purple covered capitate trichomes. My favorite of the Cake Crasher by Sea Junkie just overtook the other ones in size, smells, vigor, and seemingly potency as well. Its once green leaves slowly developed into dark, almost black leaf into flower. That equally dark buds rose out of absolutely drenched in glittery trichomes. It smells very creamy and hashy, almost a blue hue to the nugs and trichomes. They could be the dentist nugs I've ever grown on a plant. And all the checks that I look for are hit, it, since it even spread out into what looks like to be a pretty decent yield for one plant. And the 7D also basically look like golf balls. I even made this meme basically to show off how the structure of this is. And this one isn't even full of seeds. They just really have that much bulbous structure to them. Some of the different nugs, nugs almost look like cherry pie, but most of them all showed this sour diesel structure, but they had the density of the cherry pie kush. And you can see they really got plumped up because of the um, CPK. It's definitely smells like something out of my past you know it reminds you of that old skunk that you used to hide from your parents and uh i have a few winners in the tent here between the mac kush grape stomper ogbx cake crasher 7d franco's lemon cheese and the chem dog chem cookies fino i'm even starting to impress myself with that this one it was a, a harder to train plant i kind of want to say but at the same time it had a lot of um internodal spacing and it, it had um like great side branching i meant to say so the side branching made it pretty easy for it to just grow and you didn't really have to do much to it oh i'm hearing a moped go by sorry that spooked me thought something was breaking in my moped i mean in my uh, mac or something but anyway one of the main things that, you know, is that I don't believe in keeping secrets for profit, guys. I'm going to share all my exact methods on my YouTube and on my Organibus Grow blog and on LightSecretSeeds.com if you want to check out my blog. So my methods will forever be evolving. I think anyone who claims to be a pro or a master is just too stubborn to keep learning. Yes, I think my skills have developed at to a very crazy point. But I'll always um, be evolving, so I may contradict something that I say in my earlier videos, and that's just something I'm going to always do because 
I might change the way that I did something a couple of years ago, and that's just the nature of the game. And if you're not evolving and staying up to date, then you're going to be stuck in the past. So I think that uncovering that lost knowledge that was meant to be shared at no cost, and I want to share it at no cost, so it's not lost like all that old ancient secrets that got lost before us. So I love learning from the legends and trying to pay it forward. I'm currently fish finishing up my video on regenerative composting methods, which I actually just already posted. And I've slowly shifted from using 20 odd ingredients to so just a handful with my black gold compost. So you can obviously catch that on my other video. But and I'm just trying to become as regenerative as possible. So if you find anything of this useful, I appreciate you guys for watching. If you really made it this far, I can't believe it. So take another rip for me, and I'll catch you guys around. If you found anything useful, please check me out on Patreon. It really means a lot. It keeps this channel going. And until next time, stay up, buds.